Good afternoon, learners. Welcome to this afternoon's lesson. Uh, so today we're just going to uh, continue from yesterday. Remember yesterday we were working with uh, mod functions, counters, and today we're going to continue with that and uh, see how far we get with that. So I'm hoping that uh, those who didn't join us yesterday and for those who are joining us today, that you had a chance to view the videos on YouTube. Remember the videos uh, do get uh, do get uh, put on YouTube at a later time, usually in the afternoons because of uh, the change of our platform. We now using Teams to perform our lessons. Uh, remember just some admin rules at the outset. Um, <clears throat> if there's any uh, questions, you obviously can. Uh, we will have a Q&A at the end, so please send your questions through as uh, we go, and then obviously we can uh, address those questions at the end of the lesson. So the last five to ten minutes are dedicated uh, to questions. So let's go ahead and let's see what's um, required for us. So just to recap from yesterday, I'm not going to spend too much time with yesterday's work, but just to uh, recap what we did learn. We learned about enabling and disabling buttons. We learned about uh, displaying eddings using um, using the sample output as a guide. And we obviously worked with the mod function and counters. OK, so that was yesterday. If you again, if you didn't, uh, if you weren't here yesterday and you want to view that lesson, remember today's lesson is a continuation of that. So um, just just bear that in mind. So if we had to continue today, I'm going to go straight into it, which is 1.6, which said for us to find the amount of numbers uh, not divisible by three. OK, so the question is yesterday. Remember, we did the question amount of numbers that were divisible by three. And today, obviously, we're looking at the amount of numbers that were not divisible by three. OK, so the question goes ahead and says determine the amount of numbers that are not divisible by three of output accordingly. So if we had to look at the output. So this is where we are. OK, this is where I'm pointing to. So the amount of numbers not divisible by three, obviously in this instance, uh, using the numbers that were input by the user. Uh, in fact, in this instance, it was three. So that's what we're doing uh, today is we're going to code our button, this button over here, amount of numbers not divisible by three to be able to count the amount of numbers that were in fact not divisible. OK, so I'm hoping that everyone is uh, understanding where we are going with this. So just take a minute again, look at it. And as I said, uh, if there's questions about where's the interface and the files, etc. Learners, this is an absolutely uh, simple interface to design. Uh, I mean, you don't have to even put that label over there. All you got to do is just place five buttons and a memo component and you're good to go. Remember, we're more interested in the code rather than worrying about the design because Remember, when you get examined, you're not necessarily going to be asked to design the interface. OK, the interface will be given to you by the by your educator, which I'm assuming was the case in grade 10. And all you're going to do is just code in the respective buttons or within the within the implementation part of the code. OK, so I'm going to go straight into our code. So remember, we're doing this over here. Amount of numbers not divisible by three. So again, if you want to take a pick up that before we get into the code, because I'm not going to keep uh, move, uh, switching slides. So let's just uh, do that. OK, so I'm going to go into Delphi. So I'm going to share that with you. OK, so this was. Uh, OK, so I'm assuming that you guys can see the code screen in front of you. Uh, so this is what yesterday we opened. We started with. Uh, remember, we did the we did code for those three buttons. So today all I'm going to do is just go to the button that says amount of numbers not divisible by three. OK, so. I'm going to double click on that amount of numbers not divisible by three. And remember from yesterday, we need to ask ourselves, do I need to use the values in the array? 
And if the answer is yes, you need to use the values in the array. Obviously, you're going to use the for loop. OK, I have said this on repeated occasions, the purpose of the for loop. So I'm not going to talk about that again. I'm going to use the for loop. OK, for tab i is equal to 1 to 10 because there were 10 numbers uh, that were going to be input by the user. OK, so 10 numbers that were going to be input by the user. And we obviously want to test those numbers. So yesterday, if uh, you remember, we spoke about the mod function. And for those of you who had troubles understanding the mod function, all the mod function was doing was, was seeing if there was a remainder in the number. OK, it was checking for the remainder. And if the remainder was zero, obviously it meant that the number was divisible. But if the remainder was not zero, it meant that the number was not divisible. So those were some of the things just to remember. So I'm going to try to make your life a lot easier. So we said yesterday if the numbers were divisible, we went ahead and used the if statement. Uh, but today, obviously, we want to see if it's not divisible. So how simple is this? We have the not function. I'm going to go ahead and use the not function. And I'm going to say if array, remember the name of my array was array div3. And, and again, because it's, it is an array, it needs to be used with square brackets. I'm going to indicate my position within the square brackets, which is done with the i. And I'm saying that if not array div3 at position i, mod3 equals 0. Now let's take a moment just to understand this, OK? I'm not going to rush this part of here, but I want you to notice key things over here. OK, the not, and let's put comments over here. OK, so the first thing is notice the use of not. OK, whenever you get this, I know there's some uh, students will say, but why can't we just say mod 3 equals 1? Well, you can go ahead and try that out. I think it makes it a lot, a lot much, a lot more sense. Uh, if we have the not function, why shouldn't we not use it? OK, so the not function again, if not, is obviously going to check if the number is, uh, if the number, if the remainder is not 0. OK, so I hope that's easy for you to understand. So array div i mod 3 equals 0. That was what the if statement is going to check for, but the not will check for the opposite condition. OK, it will check for the false condition. So if not, uh, if we say the number mod 3 equals 0, and if the remainder is obviously not equal to uh, 0, then it is obviously not divisible by 3. So we want to create a counter variable. I'm going to go ahead and create this counter variable. I'm going to call it I count not div 3. I know it's a really long variable name. And again, you're welcome to use a shorter name. So remember, if it's a counter, it has to be assigned to zero. OK, so I'm assigning mines to zero. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say I count not div 3 is equal to I count not div 3 plus 1. But again, as I will say this yesterday, you're welcome to use the ink function, which will increment uh, if the condition is met. So ink and in brackets, you would have said, I count not div three. So you could have done either way. I just, uh, I don't mind using the that way that I just showed you, but either way is perfectly acceptable. So again, I hope you know what the purpose of the not is. The question stated that we should find the amount of numbers not divisible by three. So really simple, just in include the not over there and you're good to go. OK, so finally I want to come and display. OK, and I'm going to say this over here. Note that you need to display only once. OK, you don't want to display uh, within the loop because it's going to repeat. It's going to display 10 times and that is not what we want. We want to display out of the loop, OK? Once it has tested all 10 values, then that's the value that we would like to display. So note that the display is done out of the loop. So we need to first test those values. And once those values have been tested, then we can display it. Now remember, I'm displaying in a memo component. So dot lines dot add. 
I'm going to put a message over there and I'm going to say amount of numbers not divisible by three is I'm going to leave a space over there because you know what's going to happen if I don't leave the space. The number when it's being displayed is going to be displayed right next to the S and that's not we want. That's not what we want. So I'm leaving a space over there so that the output is quite legible. Remember everything comes in as a string and it needs to go out as a string. So I'm saying int to string. I'm going to use the variable I count not div three. OK, and remember yesterday that the sample output should say, for instance, amount of numbers not divisible by three is three and the message numbers. So I'm going ahead after this and saying plus. Yes. Uh, sorry, plus numbers. OK, and I'm going to leave a space again over there because you again, you know what will happen if we don't leave a space. So. If it if uh, let's just uh, show the code for those who are, want to have a look at it. So again, learners, uh, this question was for you to find the amount of numbers that were not divisible by three. OK, the amount of numbers that were not divisible by three. So that's the most one of the most important lines in the code. OK. Um, Again, so we went ahead, we, we used the for loop. Take note of assigning the counter. OK, so that's obviously the counter variable, and we said we could use either the ink function or we could have said I count equals I count plus one. I came outside the loop and I displayed, and I'm hoping that everyone is OK with that. So. I'm going to run the program and see what we have. I'm going to use the numbers that uh, were given to you in the question. Now I'm going to share that screen with you so that you can see the the output. OK, I'm going to share the executable file with you guys. OK, so this is what you should have on your screens. So when I click the input numbers, Remember what should happen. The user should be asked to input the numbers. I am using the numbers that were given to you in the PowerPoint. So 12, 30, 45, 45, 60, 78, 98, 10, and 12. OK, so notice the message dialog box appears and says numbers have been successfully stored. I click OK and remember from yesterday this button should be enabled. So perfect, this button gets enabled. When I click this button, the input numbers button should be disabled. Perfect. We click on the amount of numbers divisible by three. It said eight. OK, and the amount of numbers not divisible by three is obviously two. So I'm assuming that I didn't uh, type in the numbers exactly the way they were in the sample output, but obviously it is working uh, correctly because we've got eight numbers that are divisible by three and two numbers that are not divisible by three. OK, learners, so I hope you guys understood that. That was obviously being able to use the not function. OK, so really, really important. You should be able to use the not function now. OK, don't make your lives difficult and try to test for a false condition, whatever. The not function is there for you, so make good use of it. OK, so and remember this in this example, we're talking about divisible by three. It doesn't stop you if, the, if they said find out if the number is divisible by five or if it's an even or odd number, it's exactly the same. In place of the three, when we're using the mod function, we obviously replace it with the, the respective number. But remember, and I get this with learners in my class as well, when you use the mod function, it is important to note that you have to say mod the number equals zero because that's what you're testing for. You're seeing if the remainder is zero. It doesn't have to be zero, but that's where we're mostly using it for, for finding factors. OK, so I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to share with you the PowerPoint. That we obviously were working with. OK, learners, so 
we did 1.6 and as I said, as you can see the sample output, I obviously maybe just uh, input a different number because as it shows over here, the amount of numbers divisible by three, seven and three. OK, the code is correct, so you're welcome to try that on later and see if these test your input with these numbers. And it's so important, you know, you get uh, question papers where the sample output is provided to learners and learners go ahead and they use their own numbers. It is so important that you use the sample outputs that were provided to you. OK, it helps uh, eliminate wastage of time and plus you get to obviously make sure that your program is accurate as possible. So we're going to ahead and we're going to do number 1.7. OK, 1.7 has the question lowest number input by the user. OK, lowest number input by the user and it says determine the lowest number that was input by the user. Use the sample output as a guide. OK, so if you look at this interface over here or based on the on the sample output, you can see that the sample output is nine. OK, the lowest number is nine because based on the inputs that the user put, we can see that nine is the lowest number. So our job is to write code to enable the to enable us to find the lowest number that is input by the user. Again, if you want to take a sample, if you want to take a pick of this slide, you're welcome to so we can try this together. OK, so I'm going to switch over to Delphi so that we can try this out. OK, so I'm going to switch over to Delphi. OK, learners. Let's go ahead and uh, let's do this code now. Let me stop my program from running. OK, so we're going to do the code for the last part. Which is the lowest number that is input by the user. OK, I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to obviously try to do this. Uh, let's see how we can do this. Remember, we have to compare uh, we have to check each value in the array. We have to test it against each other. OK, so we need the values from the array. So I'm going to have my for loop. OK, so I'm going to go for I colon integer. OK, everyone's happy with that part. And I'm going to say for I is equal to 1 to 10 because there are 10 values that are stored in the array. We're going to go ahead with begin. Now remember what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to compare the values against each other to determine which value is the lowest. OK, so I'm going to go and say if um, array, because the values are obviously stored in the array at position I is less than symbol. But then you're thinking to yourself less than what? OK, because that's important and that's OK, so everyone's following. So obviously and then you think, OK, in order for me to. Compare values to see which is the lowest, because you, you would agree with me at the moment, it seems as if we have nothing to compare because the first value comes in. What do we compare the first value against? We have nothing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called I lowest. Remember last week's lesson? We spoke about a variable creating a variable called high highest because remember what was the purpose of that variable? The purpose of that variable was to have something for the array to test against when it is first run. I will repeat that. The purpose of these variables I lowest and high highest is to have something for the values in the array to test against when the first value is being executed because let's be let's let's would you agree with me if we had to say let's compare the first value in the array what would we compare it against okay i know that some of you might think uh, other ways in other in other scenarios or other ways but i'm going to go ahead and just say we, we're going to try to make it as simple as possible and i'm going to have a variable called i lowest OK, so we're going to say less than I lowest and I'm going to talk about this because I know someone's thinking, but you did forget you forgot to do something. I am aware of that. So we're going to say if array div three 
at position i so let's say the first time the loop runs the value stored at the first position is five and you're going to say if array div i is less than is five less than what we don't have a value for lowest can you see that learners we don't have a value for lowest so we need to assign a, a value to the lowest variable so please take note of where the variable is being assigned i'm going to say i lowest okay let me ask you this now because remember with the highest we said that uh, we could set it to zero so let's see if the, if zero would work so let's say for instance now the user goes ahead and the first value in the array is the number five okay is five less than zero obviously five is not less than zero let's say the user goes into the second value in the array and this time in the second value in the array let's say the value is 13 is 13 less than zero obviously not so can you see why assigning lowest to zero is not going to work okay and let's note that assigning lowest to zero will not work because nothing's uh, obviously any positive number is not going to be less than zero so what would we have to do we would have to assign lowest to a high value now i'm going to remember you can use whatever high value you want i'm just going to assign my lowest to 1000 okay I'm just going to assign my lowest to 1000. It can be 100, it can be 1000, it can be 10,000. You're obviously not limited in that sense, but the purpose of it is now let's see if this works, okay? So the first time the program runs, the value at, uh, let's say the value stored at position one in the array is five. Is five less than 1000? Yes, it is less than 1000. And what should we do if it is less than 1000? We want to then replace the lowest variable with that value that we just tested. So notice what's going on over here. So we're saying if array div at position i is less than i lowest, I'm hoping that you guys all understand why we are testing against high lowest and why it's obviously was set to a thousand and if it was if we, if we did in fact find a lower number then all we got to do is replace the variable lowest with that lower number so let's go ahead okay so i lowest equals to rate of now if you are sitting at home and you are getting uh, confused with how to uh, do this type of coding it's quite simple learners once you have figured out your if statement code all you're going to do is just can you see this like a like we're just switching the variables around we're saying if array div 3 is less than lowest then all we're doing is switching the lowest and array variable around or array around so we're saying i lowest is equal to array div 3 so all we did was switch the switch the values around i lowest with array div 3 so really simple and again you don't want to display the lowest number each time agree you want to display the lowest number at the end so what would be the feasible option is to display the answer out of the loop so we're going to display mem display dot lines dot add and we're going to say the, the caption the lowest number is okay don't forget to leave a space at the end plus int to string and we're obviously going to send in i lowest okay so please take note of this code learners before we in fact run the program again uh we're finding the lowest value that is stored in the array so uh we created this variable called lowest we set it to a thousand remember you're not limited to setting it to a thousand you can uh, assign whatever value you want to it obviously it has to be greater than zero we obviously looked at the case of if it was zero, what would happen? And then we just went ahead and tested. And if it was in fact lower than the previous value, you want to replace lowest with the lowest value. And notice we came out of the loop and we displayed the lowest number. Okay, so just take a moment. 
understand that. And please, again, if you, there's any questions that you are unsure of, please just uh, send it through so we can see if we can answer that for you guys. OK, so I'm assuming that everyone had a look at that. So we're going to run this program. OK, and I'm going to share that screen with you guys. OK, so let's go ahead and let's um, do the input. OK, so I'm going to use the numbers 12, 30, 45, 9, 60, 78, 98, 10, and 22. OK, the message dialog pops up saying numbers have been successfully stored. The display button pops up and we say your numbers have been entered. The amount of numbers divisible by three. Obviously, I made sure that we use the correct values as given to us in the sample output. So again, when you're watching this video later on YouTube, please use the sample values that were provided to you in the question. Remember, whilst you're watching on YouTube, you just pause the videos and try this code out. OK, it's so important that you be able to do these things. The amount of numbers divisible is obviously seven. Would you agree that when we click this button, the amount of numbers not divisible should be three? OK. By looking at would it, would you agree the lowest number is nine? And can you see our result is the lowest number is nine? OK, learners, so that was it. Please don't worry about this button here. We'll talk about this now. But that was the that was the program for arrays. I mean, if you looked at it from the first day we spoke about arrays, I think we really um, really spent uh, really uh, evolved in terms of our questioning and really looking at much more detailed questions. Uh, tomorrow's I have another nice example for you guys, which is uh, based on a Tilslip uh, program and then taking values and storing it into other arrays. So please uh, tune in for at two o'clock tomorrow for that lesson, but we're not done yet for today. So I just wanted everyone to take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go back to the PowerPoint. OK, and I have about 10 minutes to go, so I think we can still do this last question. So learners, you should be able to see. The PowerPoint on your screens uh, now. OK, so we. We did we did up to 1.1 to 1.7 and I'm hoping that the lesson was beneficial and again, Watch it over and over until you do understand how to use arrays because it's pointless you're understanding what arrays are if you're not able to apply your knowledge in answering a scenario based question. So we're going to go ahead and I just finished this off. Uh, I thought this will be this will uh, conclude the lesson quite nicely. It says place a button anywhere on the form. The caption for the button can be calculate. OK, so we're going to take a button from our tool palette and place it on our form. Now, this is what I want you to do. Now, this is quite nice. So it says let's take the value stored at index four and add it to the value stored at index two. So can you see in this case we are using specific values or we're using values rather stored at specific positions? OK, so what we are doing now learners is we are using values stored at specific positions. So please be able to do that as well because learners get so used to using the for loop and the I that they seem to forget when something when when specific uh, specific positions comes out, they seem to mess that up. So again, the question says place a button, call it calculate and obviously uh, take the value at index four and add it to the value at index two. Index all it is is the position. OK, so that's what we're going to get used to using those terms as well, because those that is the correct terminology. Index is what position the number is placed at in the array. So index four means that the value is placed at position 
four in the array and index two means that the value is placed at position two in the array. So we're going to take the values that are stored at this positions and we're going to add it together. Now that's one part for this button. Whilst we are at the PowerPoint, I'm just going to go to the next part of the question as well. And the next part of the question is, it says, let's take the value at index five and multiply it to the value at index seven. Display your answers using a message dialog box. So I tried to change it, but rather than outputting our answer into a rich edit or a memo in this case, I said, let's um, output our answer using a message dialog box. So again, take a pic of this, of this slide if you have to, uh, but we're going to obviously get to the code part now. Okay, so I'm going to share that screen with you guys. Okay, so we're going to go to Delphi. Okay, and I'm going to first stop my project from running. Okay, and we're going to, as the question said, I already did this uh, prior to this lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, create this button and uh, place it on my form. So that's what we can see over there. So let's double click this button. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the code for this. Okay, so remember in the last few minutes, we're going to have questions and answers. So please uh, start bringing your questions in so we can spend a few minutes uh, answering that. Uh, so we're going to double click on the button calculate. Okay, we're going to need. Uh, okay, so let me ask you this. Are we going to need the values from the array? Yes, but do we need a for loop uh, to get those values? And the answer is no. And I'm going to put a comment over here. We don't need a for loop to get values from the array because we know the positions. They said at index four and at index two, so we don't need a for loop if we know what index we are working with. So really important for you to note that, okay? You don't use the for loop whenever you want. You obviously need to use it uh, based on what the question is stating. So we don't need a for loop to get values in this case because the index was provided. Okay, so that comment is over there if you're trying to do this later on. I'm going to go ahead and I want to create a variable to store the difference or store the addition. So I'm going to say var i sum and I'm going to set. OK, let's call it i addition because that's let's give it OK. I addition colon integer. You're probably thinking, why am I using integer? I mean, it's not necessary to use real because we obviously the, the numbers that were going to be input were stored in an integer array. So we're just going to keep that as an integer. So I'm going to go ahead and say I addition is equal to, remember we have the index specified to us, so we need the values from the array. So they said the value at index four, which is there, and add it to the value at index two, which is there. Okay, how simple was that? Notice in place of the I, we, we put the values that were given to us. So notice what the I was in fact doing. Okay, so we're going to come in the bottom and we're going to do the other we're going to do the other um, equation as well because it said that a formula it said that we should multiply the numbers stored at index five and index seven so i'm going to create an, another variable say i multiply and i'm going to set that to an integer data type i'm going to go ahead and say i multiply is equal to the value at index five in the array so really simple five. I mean, how simple is that? So I'm hoping that you quite uh, you can be quite uh, versatile when using these arrays and not just use it using the I value or using the for loop without understanding the purpose of it. So this is what this uh, button did in fact show you that when 
index values are given to you, it's so simple. I'm going to display my answer using a show message and it leaves us with, with ample time to still for questions and answers. So I'm going to say the sum of the numbers are Okay, remember you want to convert it to a string before you send it out. So int to string, and I'm going to send in i addition, and I'm going to use another show message just to have some uh, separation when we are seeing our outputs. So I'm going to say the product of the numbers are, okay, Class int to string. We're going to get to questions now, so please, uh, please put your questions over there, whatever you're unsure about, and that should be it. Okay, so quickly take a look at this, and uh, yeah, let's let's start. Let's run the program. I can share that with you quickly, and we can obviously uh, get into the questions. I'm just going to spend a minute running the program. Okay, and I'm just going. To going to input those values quickly that we had in our sample output, which was 12, 30, 45, 66, 9, 60, 78, 98, 10, and 22. Okay, so perfect display, that, that, that. This is what I'm interested in, calculate. Okay, can you see this? Obviously, the numbers at that position are 96, and the product is 702. So I'm hoping that is correct, but yeah, that should be the that should be our answer. So again, I hope learners that was fine. I'm going to go straight into your questions now. Okay. I'm going to go straight into your questions now. Okay, so it seems that there's no questions for today. Okay, so I'm hoping that uh, that lesson went well. Let's just go back to the slides since there are no questions. Let's just uh, tie this lesson up. So we're going to go back there. OK, so what can we take from this lesson? OK, so the takeaway message from this lesson is storing values in array using the given name, enabling and disabling of buttons, Input and message dialog boxes. Obviously, we spoke so much about that. Using the not function, using the mod function as well. We talk, spoke about the technique to find the lowest value. And finally, we spoke about working with values at specific positions in an array. OK, learners, so that is what we learned today. I'm hoping that that went well. And again, if there's uh, please uh, tomorrow's lesson, we're obviously going to look at a uh, tilt slope example and storing, taking values from one array and storing it into another array. So please tune in at 11, uh, two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And uh, thank you for your time.